everyone my name is Abhishek Jain and through this video I will try to explain how uh, how one should start how one should start learning the blockchain technology okay but before starting understanding the blockchain technology concept we really need to understand you know the what kind of application infrastructure currently we use to build our applications right so to answer that question, we usually use the NTR architecture with the client server model, right? So I'm just talking about, you know, the web applications, you know, the majority of application, if we, if we see the nature of those applications, those are mostly applications are the web applications, right? So when I say the NTR model, what does it mean? We have a presentation layer on one machine, we have, you know, the application layer on a different machine, then we have a data layer on a different machine. So it means all the different, different layer we have in a different, different machines, right? So based on that, we decide whether it's a two tier application, three tier or four tier or so on and so forth, right? For example, if we have a two tier application, then we will be having a presentation layer on our client and the server will have the application server and the, and the data layer, right? And similarly, three tier would gonna be like, Applicate. Then we have a we have a presentation layer where we where where all the customer and the, all the client will be or, or all the client will be you know utilizing. Then we have an application server on one machine. Then we have you know the other machine where our database server will be running. So that would be our three tier architecture, right? And similarly, we can distribute the our database data layer into different different layer as well altogether depending on what kind of data we have. Similarly, the application architecture also we can application server also we can divide into you know the various ways there are a lot of architecture which are being you know uh, which are you know re revolving around the centralized application okay so for example if you will see the left hand side where i just mentioned the centralized application and the machine which are under the red circle which shows it's a centralized application so if any any particular customer or the client wants to utilize the application feature then it has to send the request to the centralized application and that centralized application will inter it depends what kind of transaction and what kind of request you are making with the server depending upon that it would you know cater that request now on the right side we have a centralized application okay so decentralized application so decentralized application if you will see this figure you will realize that we don't have any centralized server right but rather than we have a small small machines which are just connected with each other right so now it's not centralized so that's why we are calling this architecture as a decentralized application now the blockchain technology or the framework comes into the picture you know to create a decentralized application we need to design our architecture of application in such a way so that we will be compliant with the blockchain framework or the blockchain technology framework right so now pause for a second and just see these two figures and just try to you know keep those two figures in your mind so that when in the next slide when i will be explaining this decentralized application and a decentralized application then you can understand you know the working of these two different architecture right now so in centralized application we have this centralized server where we have application server on one machine the database server on a different machine now these are our cust these are our client machine which are you know trying to run the application or trying to utilize the feature or try to process some transaction right so now in this architecture what happens is if the centralized system just down so what would happen you know all those machine which are trying to doing some processing trying to utilize some feature of application they will not be able to do so to just overcome with this now we have a concept of replicated server so what happens the moment your centralized server goes down there is already a replicated server which is running and it automatically come into the picture and all the requests gets routed to that replicated server so that happens with you know we have a load balancer concept through which you can achieve this right but load balancer concept is more towards you know to just control the traffic whenever you have a high traffic on one machine you will route it your traffic to the different machine right so but replicated server concept gives me you know we are having one machine which is sitting idle just you know taking a data from the centralized application and that would come into the picture or come into the action when you know your main server machine just gets down right so again if your main server is not getting down in that case your machine is residing uh, idle right so you are not utilizing that that's something which is really bothering me the another concept is 
these servers are very high end configuration right it requires very high end configuration because you don't know at what time what kind of traffic you will get into right you have some visibility but that is again you know it's pretty dynamic right now just think about you know some limitation which i have felt in the centralized application architecture has single point of failure we already see that now another thing which i wanted to highlight here is security vulnerabilities toward you know the distributed delay of services where you know somebody can hack the system easily because we have only one particular machine where everything is running right and somebody can hack one machine very easily right and they can easily manipulate that i won't say it's very easy to do it but definitely you have only one point where if somehow somebody crack that that particular that particular you know the the firewall or the security measure then definitely he can get into and he can manipulate the complete system right and there are a lot of you know the vulnerabilities with which we which over the period of time we have with the centralized application and just you know adopting all all the that for all the web application the, the the kind of you know the acceptability within a market for the web application those security vulnerabilities becomes very critical and important for everybody right now blockchain technology has the solution for almost all those limitations and the security vulnerabilities right so now we're going to see how the blockchain technology help to create the decentralized application and help to just overcome with the limitation and the security vulnerabilities which i just showed you right now these are the four different different machines right i just to make it very easy i just show that the application is running and the database is also running now the question comes in if in the centralized application we need a very high end configuration by then definitely we will be needing the same kind of application and database in the decentralized application and that is where the blockchain concept comes into the picture you know where you don't actually need that so how why do you, why you won't need that we will be we will be discussing that about in my upcoming videos but for now we just need to understand how the you know the blockchain technology works and how we can create the decentralized application okay so in the blockchain technology what happens is each and every nodes you know are connected to each other okay for example node 1 is connected with node 2 node 3 node 4 node 5 similarly node 2 is connected with node 3 node 4 node 5 and node 1 and similarly node 3 so now every machine is connected with each other so what would happen this how the blockchain technology is going to you know to 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 overcome the the, the single point of failure concept right just think node 3 gets down right but node 1 node 2 node 4 and node 5 is still what would happen all the requests which are coming to your network will route one one machine to the another machine the another another good concept of the blockchain is i think a lot of people a lot of you people would have heard that distributed shared ledger what does it mean so whatever the machines which are making a blockchain network each and every machine has to have a same data which is residing on all the machines so it means all the machines are can work as a server because all the machine has the complete data now the question arises if 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 every every machine is going to have the complete data then definitely they need that much of a space so that's there that is where the another concept of the blockchain comes into the picture where we use the encryption where we use the power of hashing right definitely in upcoming video we will see that so for now hashing is something where you can just give the variable length of data and you will give the fixed length of data right and then we have the another concept of you know various data structure like patricia merkle tree in that you can just store you know your hash data that also compact the size of data which you require to just store right now just get the more detail about the blockchain you know now we have seen the centralized architecture in the blockchain you know the decentralized architecture now just a, now just a basic definition of the blockchain concept so transaction on a blockchain applications are very secure immutable distributed and trustless so these are the four points which we're going to discuss in our upcoming videos now now the now we need to understand some essential component as well the blockchain infrastructure definitely we're going to talk about it it's a little bit different right peer to peer networking definitely we need to talk about because that is how you will be making a blockchain network then the encryption hashing and digital signature that is where you will be solving lot of you know the security vulnerability concept 
consensus algorithm how the data is getting synced to all the machines how all the machines can work as a server we will see in the consensus of blockchain data storage now here we will be discussing about how the huge size data we can just compact it and store in a very less less memory right then the smart contract smart contract through which you can